Hello and welcome to Exciting Archaeology News. The history of human civilization is fascinating and perplexing, as there are still many mysteries and unanswered questions about some of the world's most ancient cultures. In this video, you will be taken on a journey through time to explore the remarkable achievements of societies like the Indus Valley, Minoans, and Nabataeans. These civilizations left an indelible mark on the world from advanced urban planning and engineering feats to complex writing systems and artistic masterpieces. Yet many of their practices and customs remain mysterious. Join us as we delve into the enigmatic past of these incredible civilizations. If you are new here, just click on the subscribe button and press the bell icon to get instant notification of latest videos. Let's get started. Boskop Man Boscop man refers to an ancient human subspecies known as Homo sapiens boscopensis. The idea was initially proposed by two South African scientists, Raymond Dart and Robert Broom, in the early 20th century. They claimed that Boscop man was a distinct human species that lived in the regions of Boscop, South Africa, around 10,000 to 40,000 years ago. In the autumn of 1913, two farmers uncovered hominid skull fragments while digging a drainage ditch in Boscop, a small town about 200 miles inland from the east coast of South Africa. Boscop's brain size is about 30% larger than our own. That is, a 1,750 cubic centimeter brain to our average of 1,350 cubic centimeters. And that leads to an increase in the prefrontal cortex of a staggering 53%. If this principled relationship among brain parts holds true, then Boscops would have had not only an impressively large brain, but an inconceivably large prefrontal cortex. The prefrontal cortex is closely linked to our highest cognitive functions, and it is possible the jump from ourselves to Boscops generated new, qualitatively different mental capacities. These people had small, childlike faces. A typical current European adult, for instance, has a face that takes up roughly one-third of his overall cranium size. Boscop has a face that takes up only about one-fifth of his cranium size, closer to the proportions of a child. Examination of individual bones confirmed that the nose, cheeks, and jaw were all childlike. Approximately 100 miles from the original Boscop discovery site, further excavations were carried out by Frederick Fitzsimmons. This site had been, at one time, a communal living center, perhaps tens of thousands of years ago. There, many rocks, leftover bones, and some casually interred skeletons of normal-looking humans were found. But to one side of the site, in a clearing, was a single, carefully constructed tomb built for a single occupant, perhaps the tomb of a leader or of a revered wise man. His remains had been positioned to face the rising sun. In repose, he appeared unremarkable in every regard, except for a giant skull. Atlantis Civilization The legend of Atlantis is a popular tale of an advanced ancient civilization that supposedly existed and then mysteriously disappeared beneath the ocean. According to the ancient Greek philosopher Plato, who first mentioned Atlantis in his dialogues Timaeus and Critias, Atlantis was a powerful and technologically advanced society located beyond the Pillars of Hercules, thought to be the modern-day Strait of Gibraltar. Plato described Atlantis as a grand city, with impressive architecture and engineering, known for its wealth, prosperity, and military might. The Atlanteans were said to have control over a vast empire that extended to parts of Europe and Africa. They were known for their advanced knowledge and scientific achievements. According to Plato, Atlantis eventually fell out of favor with the gods due to its citizens' greed and corruption. As punishment, the city was said to have been destroyed in a single cataclysmic event, sinking beneath the ocean in a single day and night of misfortune. Atlantis' story has captured people's imaginations for centuries, leading to numerous theories, speculations, and search expeditions to find the lost city. It's important to note that despite its enduring popularity, concrete evidence of Atlantis has yet to be discovered, and many consider it to be a legend or allegory rather than an actual historical city. The lack of archaeological findings, inconsistencies in Plato's accounts, and no corroborating historical records have led most historians and archaeologists to regard Atlantis as a mythical tale rather than a lost civilization. Dogon Tribe the Dogon are an ethnic group living in the central plateau region of Mali, Burkina Faso, near the city of Bandiagara. The population is in between 400,000 to 800,000. 
The Dogon are famous for their religious practices, mythology, mask dances, wooden sculptures, and buildings. The Bandiagara Escarpment, a sandstone cliff up to 500 meters or 1,642 feet high, stretches for around 150 kilometers or 90 miles, dividing the main Dogon area in two. The Bandiagara Highlands may be found northwest of the cliff, while the sandy Senogondo Plains can be found southeast. The Dogon were incredibly advanced for their time. We have learned more about the Sirius star system from them than from any other civilization. Sirius A is the brightest star in the sky, sometimes known as the Dog Star. The human eye has no trouble picking it up. However, in 1862, astronomers found a much fainter star behind Sirius A and gave it the creative designation Sirius B. French anthropologist Marcel Griol had high hopes for impressing the Dogon with his knowledge at his initial meeting with them in 1933. Instead, he learned that they were well aware of everything there was to know about Sirius B, despite having no telescopes and not being able to see the star without using special equipment. Even yet, the Dogon asserted the existence of a third, even less bright star they referred to as Emeya. No evidence of this one has ever been detected by astronomers. Given their apparent lack of contact with the outside world, where did they learn so much? The Dogon claim they were taught by an alien civilization of amphibians from a planet beyond the Sirius system named the Nomos, Nan Madal in the island of Pompeii. Nan Madal is a historic city on the island of Pompeii in Micronesia. Its inhabitants lived in a sophisticated and novel culture 1,200 years ago with its intricate network of stone structures and canals erected on a series of artificial islets, Nan Madal is renowned for its outstanding architecture and engineering. The Sordalur dynasty dominated the island of Pompeii from their capital city, Nan Madal. The city was the seat of power and authority in a stratified social order. Nan Madal was the site of Pompeii's initial settlement and subsequent development into a thriving metropolis, with places of worship, temples, and tombs. It took the builders of Nan Madal about 25 miles to transport 750,000 metric tons of basalt rock, stones used to construct quarry columns from a site in Sokes on the other side of Pompeii, to the underwater coral reefs that serve as the city's bedrock. Then they were stacked in an interlocking pattern using ropes and levers to create platforms, ceremonial locations, homes, tombs, and crypts. No cement or mortar was employed. Instead, the buildings were held together by the strategic placement and weight of the individual basalt columns and some coral fill. Kukateni Tripilian Civilization The discovery of ancient cultures and artifacts related to those cultures often brings new and surprising information about how our ancient ancestors once lived. Some cultures are found to have engaged in very unique practices. One of these is the 7,000-year-old Eastern European Kukuteni Tripilian culture, who constructed sophisticated, organized, and densely populated settlements only to burn them to the ground every 60 to 80 years before relocating and rebuilding the same settlement all over again. This puzzling practice of ritualistic burning of the Kukuteni Tripilian settlements has raised many questions as to why a culture would put such effort into creating their settlements only to burn them down. Was this a practice founded on religious principles? Or was it simply an exaggerated version of death followed by rebirth? In creating their settlements, they used stone and copper axes to cut down trees to build dwellings and structures which consisted of wooden framing coated with clay or bran. Their structures were built both single and multi-story with clay benches and altars. The inside floors and walls contained ornamental paintings in red and white, seemingly intended to provide protection from evil spirits. The question that arises is why did they regularly burn down their settlements? It is difficult to imagine the culture's process of burning its settlements to the ground and then rebuilding. While there are strong theories as to why this would take place, it seems as if such a practice would place a somewhat strong burden on the people of the civilization. With rebuilding occurring every 60 to 80 years, it is likely that every other generation took part in the rebuilding process. Without the tools and materials that we have today, this rebuilding would have been a significantly burdensome process with the need to manually cut down trees and to erect the new structures. While this is a typical challenge faced by many cultures, the people of the Kukateni Tripilian culture are unique in that they would intentionally destroy functional settlements and then rebuild. 
giant network of 24 cavernous chambers. Five natural ponds in the Zhejiang province of China were drained in 1992 by local farmers, who then uncovered a giant network of 24 cavernous chambers beneath them. Five large caves were found directly below the five ponds, each plunging approximately 100 feet deep and averaging over 11,000 square feet. Since then, 19 more cavernous chambers have been discovered. Their current names are Longyu Caves. All of them seemed perfectly man-made, which was maybe the most surprising thing of all. The walls, supported by pillars, are angled upward at precisely 60 degrees and have bands measuring 23 inches wide chipped into every facet. In addition, the entrance holes were oriented so that they face south and southwest, where the sun receives the most sunlight. Skilled architects constructed these caves, soil dating back to the Western Han Dynasty. About 2,000 years ago, yielded fragments of a clay pot that had been partially buried. These caves, quarries, and ceremonial caverns are unlike any others discovered in China to date and may have served as anything from mausoleums to military encampments. Gobleki Tempe Gobleki Tempe is in Upper Mesopotamia, a region that boasts some of the earliest examples of organized cultivation in human history. During the pre-pottery Neolithic period, 10th to 9th millennium BC, communities of hunter-gatherers created enormous constructions that have been interpreted as monumental community buildings. The site is made up of many large stone pillars that are formed in circular and oval shapes or enclosures. Animals such as snakes, foxes, boars, and birds are depicted in ornate reliefs on these pillars, some of which can weigh up to 20 tons. Most likely, the enclosures had roofs constructed of wood or other combustible materials that have since decomposed and disappeared. The steep, rocky slopes of Gobleki Tempe are a stone mason's paradise. Prehistoric masons may have shaped softer limestone outcrops into pillars on the spot using flint tools, then carried them a few hundred yards to the summit and lifted them erect without needing metal chisels or hammers. The site's original excavator, German archaeologist Klaus Schmidt described it as the world's first temple, a sanctuary used by groups of nomadic hunter-gatherers from a wide area with few or no permanent inhabitants. Mozu Kofun Tombs The largest Japanese tomb is in Daisan Kofun. It is often thought to be where the enigmatic emperor Nintoku was laid to rest. Because so much of Nintoku's life and reign are veiled in myth, his status as Japan's 16th emperor is hotly contested. The royal burial grounds of the tomb are massive, ranking among the largest anywhere. It is a woody region larger than the Great Pyramid of Giza. The Mozu Kofun tombs are a collection of 49 burial mounds centered on Emperor Nintoku's tomb. Sakai, a city in Osaka prefecture to the south of the metropolis of the same name, is home to several megalithic mausoleums. During the Kofun period, 250 to 538 AD, tomb clusters were built for powerful lords and nobles. While tombs come in various sizes and styles, the most well-known ones are often rectangular or keyhole-shaped when viewed from above. Daisen Kofun has dimensions of 486 feet in length and 115 feet in height. Nintoku's tomb is larger in volume and surface area than the Great Pyramid of Giza or the tomb of the first Qin Emperor of China. The peaceful and scenic path through the grounds of the tomb is stunning in the spring when the cherry trees bloom. Baalbek Stone One of the most mysterious Roman Empire ruins is located in Baalbek, Lebanon, and it is a monumental 2,000-year-old temple to Jupiter built atop stone slabs that weigh 3,000 tons each. Although the Romans call it Heliopolis, the name Baalbek honors the Phoenician god Baal. Amazing artifacts and unsolved riddles have been found there throughout history. The Baalbek stones consist of six enormous Roman-worked stone blocks. The Trilithon refers to the three smaller columns comprising a podium wall within the Roman complex of the Temple of Jupiter Baal, Heliopolitan Zeus, on Tel Baalbek. The weight of one of these is roughly 800 tons. The remaining three are Roman monoliths that are not connected to any bigger construction. They are commonly referred to as the Stone of the Pregnant Woman, estimated to weigh 1,000 tons, the Stone of the South, 1,242 tons, and the Forgotten Stone, 1,650 tons. In descending order of size, 
These are the largest, third largest, and fifth largest stones ever discovered quarried by humans. They were likely meant for the Jupiter Ball complex nearby, perhaps as an addition to the Trilithon, but were probably left in the quarry because of their size. Island of the Giants Did you know that Island of the Giants is just one of several names by which Sardinia is known? Some of the island's ancient ruins and artifacts are enormous, and various local tales tell of ancient towering Sardinians who gave the island its unique name. You can find evidence of these alleged giants around the island and its long history. The giant's tombs are monumental burial sites that date back before the Neuragic period, making them one of the most well-known remnants of the giant society. The giant statues of warriors known as the Monte Prima Giants, discovered in Sardinia about 50 years ago, are another important but less well-known monument. There are also urban legends about enormous skeletons discovered in rural areas, apparently belonging to individuals as tall as 4 meters. But according to archaeologists, in reality the dimensions of the tombs of giants were due to the fact that these were collective tombs, capable of containing several dozen, if not hundreds, of burials. The London Hammer A hammer constructed of iron and wood was discovered in 1936 in London, Texas and has since become known as the London Hammer. Some have viewed the hammer as an unusual artifact because a portion of it is embedded in a concretion of limey rock dating back to the Lower Cretaceous period. Max Hahn and a female acquaintance were supposedly traveling along the Red Creek Corridor near London when they came across the hammer. They picked up a peculiar loose rock with a chunk of wood embedded in it. Max, their son, smashed up the boulder ten years later and discovered the hammerhead within. Some have speculated that the metal hammerhead, which is almost 400 million years old and measures around 6 inches in length and 1 inch in diameter, was not employed for heavy construction, but for fine work or soft metal. The hammerhead's metal is made up of iron, 96.6%, chlorine, 2.6%, and sulfur, 0.74%. After creationist Carl Baugh purchased the hammer in 1983 and declared it a monumental pre-flood discovery, the artifact gained widespread attention. I hope you enjoyed the video. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, and share your thoughts and questions in the comments section.